Good morning, everybody. Day two, we are at Ammo headquarters here in the Northeast, and we managed to get the car into Larry's studio. A um, couple of things I wanted to point out on the car now that we have it here, we have it lit. So one of the reasons that makes this car really unique, uh, this is a 5000S. Uh, it was not officially imported into the U.S. As a, as a legal car, and when it came over, they had to make some changes to make it pass emissions. So we have figured out that this is some sort of a custom fuel-injected intake system that somebody had built into this car. Now, originally, this car came from the factory as a two-valve or as a two-valve carbureted car, but at the time, it wouldn't pass the emissions in the U.S. So they creatively came up with a custom-built intake manifold using a Porsche Bosch system as best we can figure, and uh, had made the car work. Um, the owner, about 20 years ago, parked the car, it was running fine, and it never started back up again, and he never got a chance to really get it running properly. So he spent the last couple of decades sourcing all the proper parts, carburetors, intake manifolds, and everything that he needed to bring the car back to its original side draft carburetor setup. He never got around to finishing it, instead he sold it to us, and after Larry's doing, done doing his magic, we'll take it to the shop and we will finish bringing it back to its original carburetor form. Okay, so for the game plan, first thing we're gonna do is I just filled up the tire because it's leaking a little bit. Then we're going to strategically move this over. It's a little bit not proper on the lift right now. See if we can lift this thing up, which is gonna be super helpful because we have to do a lot of lower polishing and to do that on my knees for a long period of time, not a good look. After that, uh, we of course, first are gonna wash it, scrub it down, a little bit of uh, uh, foam, power wash, and see how much this can actually hold, meaning all the seams. I'm a little unsure. So we're going to put some water on it and see if anything leaks through. And then if it does, we'll adjust technique from there. But then again, we're going to polish, and then we'll work the interior, we'll work the engine, but we have at least four or five days of uh, getting this thing back into shape.
Go. Do you want to tell us what we're doing? You already did an outro. Oh. So we're just saying like thanks to Larry. Am I talking to him? Well, you gotta. Yeah. I mean, you direct this a little can bit here. Turn this off for a second so we can figure this out. No, this is fun. Actually, I'm just gonna put this. Not kidding. Uh, hey guys, we're wrapping things up here at Ammo Headquarters, and uh, the car looks amazing. We're probably gonna send a picture to the owner. He's probably gonna lose his mind and ask us if he wants to buy it back. I think that's uh, a guarantee. He's gonna probably. He's gonna want to buy it back. Yeah. It's so crazy. not everything came out perfect. Uh, as to be expected with a car this old. And, and if you watch Larry's video, he'll go into more of the details with some of exactly why some of the paint came out perfect and some of it didn't. Um, our videos down the road will go into a little bit more of the mechanicals of it, but it, it looks amazing right now. So we're gonna catch our flight back to Miami and leave the car with Larry. And then um, we'll see how it goes. But I'm definitely looking forward to getting warm again. So, yeah. Um, what did you think of the car? I think it's awesome. It's a it's a great representation of a Lamborghini. I think it's relatively common to have issues with the paint, as you can see up here. I talked about in my video. We have crow's feet, um, which is a common thing where it's actually sort of delaminating from the bottom cool. up instead of the top down. So I polish from the top down. Yeah. <laughs> so what that means is. Uh, effectively, I can't really do anything to it. Uh, what you can do to replace, to fix it, is unfortunately repaint it. So I can shine this up and basically pull all the dead, dry skin off right. the top of it, but I can't go from the bottom to the top. I have to go from nope. it's very logical. So anything that starts from the bottom is going to be there, and you can still see after we polished it, it looks a thousand times better. But does it look perfect? No. It will get there. We got to do the interior, we got to do the, uh, the trunk. Okay. Um, but overall, uh, I think it's looking pretty good. I mean, do you like doing challenging cars like this a little yes, bit better? Yes, every single I mean, panel is different. If you saw on the front there, the passenger side front, absolutely perfect. If yeah. the whole car was like that, this thing would have been, you know, like, a, like 100 point car or whatever, right? Uh, but unfortunately, it's just very common. There's different panels that have different amount of paint at different depths. It's, so yeah, it's kind of like every panel I take it and I roll the dice, I'm like, what's this one going to be? That's, uh, that's what makes it kind of funnier. And I have a feeling that looking at the mechanical of this car, it, it's we're going to have the same issues at the shop that you have with the paint, we're going to have it with the mechanicals because we're not entirely sure what everybody did with the car mechanically over the years. You're not sure what this car has been through as far as cleaning over the years. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we, the, the owner showed us some pictures of him washing the car and I'm sure it was freaking you out. It's super like, tight pants, he's sitting in there and doing this <laughs> thing, I was like, ah! <laughs> so, but, uh, but uh, stay tuned for, for update videos over the next couple of months. We'll let you know, everybody know how things go and I know your video will be pretty good coming out in the next couple of weeks. And um, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time. got to see another beautiful video from our talented uh, team member Albert Manduka. I think last week's video and today's video are we're, we're, we're art um, so thank you for your comments uh, but but all the credit uh, goes to Albert for that um, I'm just here to tell you a little bit about the story behind this Countach and everyone has asked us and made a comment well why would it be stuck in a barn etc 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 um, and before I get into that, I do want to make one note that we didn't get to see it in its final, uh, you know, stage of beauty and its finished uh, production, but definitely check out uh, Ammo. Uh, I think in two weeks they're going to release their own video. Uh, there'll be a link for that uh, somewhere here. Um, and um, you'll see it in its, its, its sort of final, beautifully polished state. Um, and thank you again to the, to, the, to, to the guys from Ammo and Larry, and you guys are absolutely incredible, I and mean, we thank you so much. Um, but this Countach has an interesting story. So I got a call uh, about a year ago, and um, it was from a, 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 a really sweet girl that's in the automotive industry, Dana. Uh, thank you again. We'll post a link to her Instagram or however she wants to promote uh, what she does. Um, and, uh, you know, really, I always get calls about Countaches and different cars now, and it's, it's really an honor and a blessing that you guys are reaching out to us about cars that are hidden away and cars that aren't advertised. Um, so it's, it's definitely exciting. 
And I start getting a few photos from her of a, this essentially this Countach in a barn. There's no wing. The, the rear hood is you know basically off of the car. Uh, the car is covered in dust. And the first thing I see is this sort of homemade fuel injection. And I was terrified. Um, if, if you don't know and you haven't followed us before, you know that basically the Countach up until 1985 was not legal for the US. So for many years, uh, you had importers that were figuring out ways to make the Countach pass EPA DOT. Uh, we've talked about uh, importers Trevor Thomas and Jazz Rawalla, who had the front wing to act as a bumper. Um, and this car was imported uh, by a, a sort of lesser known importer, I think it was Village Imports. Um, and they essentially had done, you know, side marker lights, things like that, and then the fuel injection system, which was not factory. Now later in 1985, the factory used the basis from Trevor Thomas and Jazz Rawala to develop their own factory fuel injection system, uh, which was built for about 25,000 S cars. But this was originally a Rosso on narrow European spec side draft carbureted 5000 S. Um, so that was my biggest concern. When I saw the car, I saw the homemade fuel injection, I said, oh my God, where are the intakes, where are the carbs? Because those things are unobtainium today. Um, very hard to find parts for Countach's like that. You could find gaskets and things, but when you're talking about carbs and intakes, it gets a little more difficult. And um, you know, the car didn't look bad, but I just really said, I said, you know, Dana, I'm so sorry. I, this is my offer. I can't go up more. You know, this is just where we're at. I think the car needs a lot of work. Cosmetically, it didn't look bad, but the car needs a lot of work. So fast forward, uh, about a month ago, um, I get a nudge from Dana again. She says, hello. You know, the gentleman, it looks like he's really interested in selling the car now. And uh, I said, I need more photos. I need more details. And she starts to send me more photos. And what I realized was that there was a massive <laughs> desk or, or area of parts. He had carbs, he had intakes, he had gaskets, he had seals. So he had everything to take this car back to European carbureted spec. And I basically said, okay, we have a deal. Let's figure it out. This is, <laughs> this is not as bad of a project as I think it is. Um, but I, I would think the coolest part of this story is not that it was a Countach in a barn, but just how passionate this gentleman was and a young guy, sort of his story in getting his dream car. So the story behind the car was, uh, the gentleman, the, this former owner, was going through DuPont registry and he saw an advertisement for a 1985 5000 Quattro Valvole Countach. And it was at a Dodge Chrysler dealer, I believe in Ohio. And he basically called up, he said, great. He said, I'm coming in, I want the car. And this was his dream. He had worked as a mechanic for many years. I, I want to say it was 27, 28. He'd worked for eight, 10 years as a mechanic. He'd been saving money, saving money. And him and his father went to the Dodge Chrysler dealer to go buy this Countach. Once he arrived, he realized that the car was actually not a 1985 5000 Quattro Valvole, rather a 1984 5000S. In that process, I don't think he realized at the time that it had a modified fuel injection. I think he just thought it was, you know, something stock. Um, so it was a little discouraged that it wasn't a Quattro Valvole, but he ended up buying the car and he ended up driving it back home, um, which is, I, I told him, I said, dude, you are hot shit. I can't imagine any 27, 28 year old guy in 1984, 1985 era, he was, it was actually in 1988 when he bought the car, uh, driving a bright red black Countach. As cool as it gets, I, I want to make one little comment. Today we see Lamborghinis everywhere, they're more produced, Ferraris everywhere. But back in the 1980s, you did not see these cars. This was like seeing a Koenigsegg, Bugatti, uh, name all the greatest hypercars together. At one place, that was what basically today, what like seeing a Countach was then. You didn't see exotic cars everywhere. Um, and, and these cars were super limited uh, in, in production. So essentially he drives it back home. He uses it for a few years. He realizes in the process that it has the wrong fuel injection. And his dad uh, basically started spending time to find the parts. Now, what was very cool that comes with the car is all these photos. He had done an engine out. He had done some work over the years and sort of all these photos and then all of the notes 
and the invoices and the parts sort of labeled with these notes of, you know, he bought this from Nastasi Racing, who was the Lamborghini distributor. And he, he spoke to Natalino, who was the parts guy, who was a dear friend of my dad. So it was sort of fun to go through his father's notes and say, oh, this is where he bought this part. I knew that guy. I, you know, my dad knew that guy. Um, and then one day, at some point in the 90s, he had told me he'd put about 6,000 kilometers, the fuel pump seized. Um, and it just became one of those things where he had parked the car, he'd order the fuel pumps, and he sort of started saying in his mind, okay, I'm now going to get ready to take off the fuel injection, put the carbs on. And we had a really honest conversation. He said, well, life happened. I got married. You know, uh, you know, at one point he had had, he'd gone through a divorce and just things happened and he kept pushing this project down the road, further down the road and further down the road. And at this point, the cars were probably not that expensive either. So, you know, a, a, a Countach that was non-running could have been forty or $50,000 uh, at some point in the 90s. So he, he'd push it back and then, you know, he got the, the fuel pumps and he was ready to install them. and. And then he realized one of the fuel lines was bad, and, and it just became one thing after another. And he had decided at some point in the early 2000s that he was gonna tackle this car when he was gonna retire. And you know, we, we had a very real conversation. It was always a dream of his. The car was definitely a part of his life. And he just said, you know what? I'm at a phase in my life now where I don't need this car. Um, I loved it for so many years. I drove it, I, got, I, I checked that that check off of my bucket list. So I did it um, and I felt it was, it was time that the car probably needed a big, you know, it was a big project. It was no longer just, you know, fuel pumps um, and he decided to sell. So very cool story. You never know what's gonna pop up, what's gonna sort of sneak out, um, you know, cause there are many cars, while we, we're always researching these cars and documenting cars, there are many cars that are still missing. Um, that's another plug that we do love to take care of our followers and fans. I think we recently paid a reward uh, to the gentleman that helped us find the original manufacturer of the PPG Pace Car Light. Uh, we also recently paid a reward to another one of your YouTube followers that helped us find the manual LP640 Coupe orange coupe that we had had. Um, so listen, we're always looking for interesting stories like this cars. So please reach out to us. Uh, I know Albert has his email in the, the link and stuff like that. So anyways, thank you guys again. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. We have a ton more cool content coming. We have a very special video coming soon. Uh, we're gonna take you for a ride in a Diablo GT. We're gonna take you for a ride in a CLK DTM. And we're gonna give you a little behind the scenes unveiling one of the greatest Countaches that we've had, ever had the honor of purchasing that we are gonna unveil at Amelia Island Concourse. So stay tuned guys. Thank you again for watching.